Now I would like to give the floor to our first keynote speaker, um, Dr. Conrad Raver. I know Conrad for quite a while because uh, he's a lecturer of a top class inline inspection course that we will also again offer at our PTC 2021. Conrad uh, studied physics at the University of Mainz and got his PhD from the University of Erlangen, following different positions at Pipetronics, NDT Systems and Services and TÜV Rheinland. He joined Innospection in 2008, where he is head of research and development. His focus is on the development and refinement of testing technologies with applications for underwater or otherwise difficult to inspect structures. And um, with this background, he's certainly exactly the right keynote speaker to kick off a summit on advances in the inspection of challenging pipelines. Um, he uh, will talk about uh, pushing the limits of what is possible challenging pipelines in the past, the present, and the future. Please make use of the uh, Q&A feature right next to this window here in order to ask your questions that we will, uh, will be discussed afterwards. So Conrad, please, the floor is yours. Yes, uh, thank you, Dennis, very much for this uh, kind introduction. Um, a good afternoon, a good morning, and a good evening from my side as well. Um, um, I would like to uh, use this opportunity to uh, set the framework a little bit for today's event, uh, to outline a little bit the context that we will talk about, uh, the terminology uh, that we will be discussing, and also try to categorize the topics into what has been achieved a uh, long time ago and uh, of uh, the kind of things that we still um, uh, discuss today. <clears throat> So um, I would assume that most of you are familiar with what inline inspection is, and Dennis has briefly uh, mentioned this. Uh, inline inspection is the inspection of pipelines using inline inspection tools, that is intelligent PICs, uh, tools that inspect pipelines while uh, being pumped through the line uh, and carry out a task of non-destructive testing in order to find defects. <clears throat> this is uh, a type of uh, inspection that is uh, very much a standard uh, today, uh, and it is, has been for decades already. Um, there is a lot of inline inspection ongoing. Uh, there are service providers that uh, offer this as a service. Um, uh, it is a very competitive market as well. That means there are many players, uh, different parts of the world. There are larger players, larger vendors uh, that offer a lot of te different technologies, smaller ones that focus on very specific types of uh, services. Uh, and, but this competitiveness ensures that we have these inspections at reasonable, pri reasonable prices, I would, I would say. This is maybe debatable, but it, I would say the, the, the competitiveness ensures a reasonable price. And of course, there's also constant drive and demand for technology uh, development. Uh, so inline inspection is the best available technique. But uh, yeah, what we will talk about is the limits where this is not so simple to, uh, to apply. Um, I mean, today, uh, the use of inline inspection is mandatory or at least highly, highly recommended under several codes, and I'm mentioning uh, two here, uh, but uh, it is at least the state of the art, as I said, the best available technique. Uh, and as such, um, the technology is also codified uh, with norms, and I'm mentioning a few norms. These came up roughly 10 to 15 years ago, um, and since then, this industry is definitely matured. Um, so uh, some people talk about even a commodity that is uh, sort of, uh, well, it's a service, of course, but uh, as something that is, 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 is a standard. But the question is, of course, what uh, do we do if uh, such an operation like an inline inspection is not so easily uh, carried out? And there's different terminology that has been around uh, in the, well, I wouldn't say all the days, but a few years ago, we were mainly talking about piggable and unpiggable pipelines. And uh, those of you who joined, uh, and read the title of Challenging Pipelines, uh, maybe thought, what is it about? Wow, you mean unpickable pipelines, of course, yeah, um, because this terminology is still very uh, common. Um, but we have we've started to drop this a little bit, and the reason for that is that the 
pickable or unpickable, the focus is very much on um, <clears throat> getting the tool through the line, basically. Uh, can I really uh, run a tool through the line or not? And it categorizes the whole topic into two things, pickable and unpickable. And that was a little bit of a bit of an oversimplification of, of this topic. So uh, today we rather talk about challenging pipelines or inspection of challenging pipelines, which means there is no off-the-shelf solution to carry out an inspection. And another term that is very common in North America now is difficult to inspect pipelines or DTI. Uh, and both of these um, uh, wordings uh, emphasize that it's more a gradual thing that uh, we, we talk about. It's not like uh, yes or no, there are different degrees of challenges or there are different degrees of difficulties that need to be overcome. Um, so on this chart, uh, just one attempt to uh, categorize us a little bit further. Uh, it's uh, simple. So we start from the top. If the line is uh, pickable or if there's no challenge, yeah, well, of course, then we go to uh, <clears throat> the standard ILI solution. If the line is what was deemed uh, or considered unpickable, uh, or if there is a challenge to run a, a, a simple ILI uh, tool, then, well, at first there are two options, either modify the line or modify the tool. And modify the line is something like, um, well, if there is um, a, a section band or a mitered band in there, replace it with a 3D band. And then, of course, we're back to standard ILI. These are kind of problems that we have had as long as ILI exists, which is like 40 years at least for now, uh, which is not really uh, the main topic I think that we will discuss today. Um, because uh, prior to any ILI operation, we'll ensure what is called pickability. So can we run the tool through? Um, modifying the line with some simple modifications uh, allows to do uh, uh, a standard ILI operation. But then, uh, and that has happened pretty much in the last 20 years, I would say, until today, uh, of course, we are modifying the tool to allow an operation which is somewhat similar to an ILI operation. Uh, in some cases, it is inline inspection. In some cases, it might be slightly different. For instance, if they are aligned with dual or multi diameters, we need tools that actually can expand or contract to run through the line. Uh, if I cannot uh, retrieve a, uh, an inspection tool on the other side, I need bi-directional tools. So tools that can be pumped one way and be pumped back there are special insertion techniques nowadays and special tools that uh, are, can be inserted through these uh, 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 possible insertion uh, positions. There are, of course, already for a long time uh, tools on umbilicals that are pumped, uh, so they can be pumped forth and back. Uh, there are crawlers, and the, this is where we see quite a development nowadays. Uh, crawlers could be on umbilicals as well. They could be remotely controlled. They could be also robotic, which means um, that, uh, of course, they um, they run. And in the end, they could also be autonomous, uh, meaning that um, we do not have a contact to this crawler anymore. It crawls into the pipeline and then uh, decides more or less by itself when to come back. An, an ILI tool by itself could also be considered autonomous because it runs by itself. We don't have any interaction with it, while an, uh, an umbilic umbilical pig is something where we always have contact with. But the, uh, the highest uh, degree here is an autonomous robotic tool, uh, which is also entering the market now. Um, this addresses a lot of um, possible challenges or uh, difficulties in inspecting a pipeline. But then maybe there are even more problematic things. Um, I was trying to coin the word not at all pickable at one point, but that didn't really uh, come through. Uh, maybe technically, even financially, or when it comes to confidence, how confident am I that this is going to be successful? Um, there might be other uh, solutions. And then we may go to uh, external inspection, which is, of course, not a full replacement, but which might be an option as well. And the other category here, which is on the, on the lower left, is maybe uninspectable pipe 
uh, types, um, <clears throat> which means that uh, even though the pipeline is what is called pickable, uh, the technology might be not there yet to really find the necessary defects. And I'll have a few examples on this as well. So when I uh, address the issue of uh, uh, running an ILI tool, I will roughly uh, look through three categories to understand whether I run into issues. Uh, the first would be accessibility. Can I, how can I get the tool into the pipeline in the first place? Uh, which I've addressed by special insertion techniques, if necessary, like for missing launches, not uh, 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 available launches, and so forth. The second term or, or area is negotiability. Can I run the tool through the line? Uh, is there anything special with geometries and so forth? Uh, Multi-diameter debris, deposits, and uh, other potential op obstacles. And the third area to be addressed is propulsion. Um, can I ensure that the tool is actually moving through the line? High, low uh, flow, uh, high, low uh, uh, pressure, no flow at all, too slow a speed, and so forth. Uh, these three areas uh, I will address and understand what the degree of difficulty is and the degree of, uh, yeah, degree, degree of a challenge. The same could, of course, be done for external inspection, accessibility. Uh, so um, there is some there are some above ground methods nowadays also for onshore pipelines to inspect these. But usually a dig out is required to do an, uh, an inspection of an onshore uh, pipeline, uh, which is not really an option uh, in most cases. I mean, we talk about verification here sometimes, but uh, a complete inspection could not we could not consider uh, some dig outs as a complete re inspection, although even the codes allow what is called um, um, direct assessment, which sort of replaces some type of internal inspection. But for offshore uh, pipelines, that is uh, a little different. Arisers are obviously accessible from the outside, and subsea pipelines with some restrictions are also accessible from the outside. The negotiability. Uh, is an issue with external inspection uh, because we have clearly uh, areas that are covered which I cannot access. Uh, like for a riser, that might be a clamp, but for that purpose, I might may go to different technology that uh, is measuring more remotely. Uh, but uh, it will remain such that an external inspection will always leave out some areas. And propulsion is not so big an issue for external things, but of course, I want to gather my or acquire my data also in a more automatic manner uh, and not, uh, not do anything like handheld operations. So I will also have some type of a machinery that scans areas automatically. <clears throat> in general, the bottom line is if you can do an internal inspection, you get a more detailed picture at once. So whenever possible, you rather do an internal inspection than an external inspection, uh, but nevertheless, external inspection is possible. Here we see some uh, possible applications for external inspection in an offshore pipeline. Uh, I don't want to go through all of these, but you can see that uh, remotely operated uh, tools may attach uh, some type of a crawler or framework uh, to a pipeline from the outside and then uh, scan a certain area. Uh, and you can get data comparable to the quality of what an inline inspection tool delivers, but uh, of course, only for a few uh, uh, portions of the pipeline. <clears throat> um, but of course, there's also quite an uh, advancement uh, in this area. Uh, the, the other topic, which is very interesting, is non-inspectable pipelines. What are be, do I mean by this? Uh, there are some types of pipes which are, uh, by the nature of how they are built, uh, difficult. Uh, to inspect. Um, and I have two examples here. So on the left, we see a flexible riser pipe. Uh, and you can see those of you that are not familiar with uh, this offshore technology, uh, you can see, of course, I have several layers. Uh, and I need to inspect, address defects in principle in all of these layers uh, separately, um, uh, uh, which obviously a standard ILI tool will have difficulties to achieve. On the right, uh, we can see uh, a short section of um, um, pipe, which is lined with a corrosion-resistant alloy. 
that is visible there. In the inside, there's a thin layer of, a, of this, uh, uh, could be a stainless steel, for instance. Uh, both of these tools, uh, of these pipes are typically used in the upstream uh, business, in the upstream area for sour services, but can be part of a regular pipeline. And the problem is, well, the problem is not that this would be not negotiability, negotiable or accessible for an ILI tool. ILI tools do run through these pipelines on a regular basis, but they don't inspect them, or at least not properly. So um, here we have to find not just modifications of tools, but often we have to find completely different inspection technologies to uh, address these uh, problems. And in the end, I would like to finish up with uh, uh, addressing some commercial aspects of uh, inspection of challenging pipelines. Of course, I would assume that today we'll be mainly talking about technology, which is very interesting. Um, a lot can be done if uh, money and time is not important, but in our world, money and time is important. Um, so um, to, to understand some commercial aspects and also to understand the difference between standard ILI and challenging, uh, I have uh, this slide here. So a standard inline inspection uh, a, a, um, a provider has a fleet of tools available, often in a modular design. So uh, it doesn't really require a lot of uh, attention or a lot of effort uh, to uh, make a tool available. It is sort of what we call off the shelf. Uh, there's no special tool commissioning um, uh, because the tools are operating all along. They, uh, they are, have been in service for years. No special testing or calibration is done. Of course, the calibration is done prior to every run, but no special uh, uh, commissioning calibration. There's no special training uh, required uh, for technicians or analysts because they receive a training when they start the job. When they start the job, these people get trained. Um, they have to do the job, but then they do one job after the other. Uh, they, we use existing NDE procedures, and uh, the, uh, typically, that's very important, these inspection tools are booked out over a month. So uh, they earn money all the time, uh, which is important when it comes to offering the service as a reasonable, at a reasonable price. Different to challenging inspection, what we have is uh, we have an engineering department which needs to get involved. Now, engineers are usually higher paid. Uh, that drives cost. Um, we need uh, bespoke tools um, <clears throat> that require a proof of the fitness for the job, something like um, um, a factory acceptance test or so. Uh, we are out of ordinary applications here, so we require training because often these tools might be used the first time ever. Yeah? Uh, uh, challenging means a very different type of operation all the time. Um, we may, may need to write up new procedures, which then would need to be approved by level three, um, uh, which is addition, in addition some, some uh, quality uh, requirement that comes on top. And what is very important, again, uh, and uh, which is the reason why uh, a lot of service companies stay a little bit away from this, is these tools might be developed for special applications and then uh, they may be on the shelf for a month, or I have to say, in some cases, <laughs> they are never used again, yeah? which is a pity, but they are very bespoke for a specific type of operation, which means um, they are used uh, uh, just once in their lifetime. This drives cost, and of course, one of the developments that we see is that we have to get more into this modular and um, off-the-shelf type of inspection with these challenges that we face to make it also uh, economically uh, more reasonable. Okay, I think that is uh, my introduction. Um, I hope this was giving you some uh, uh, interesting information. Uh, of course, I didn't go into any details here, but I think that is what the, um, the other uh, uh, presentations will do then. Uh, I know that there is a little time maybe left for questions, but I'll give back to you, Dennis, for now. And I would like to thank you very much for allowing me to introduce this. Yes, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Conrad, uh, for this great overview uh, of what is uh, already possible and uh, what we are probably heading to. 
Um, so, um, any questions here in the audience? Um, I've seen that uh, we have already received one question. Um, hi, Conrad. Isn't UT being touted as to uh, as the go-to technology for the inspection of CRA-lined pipelines? Yeah, okay. I didn't go into the details of that. Um, yes, I mean, UT and MFL can inspect uh, CRA when we have to distinguish lined and clad pipes here uh, to some degree. Um, but uh, especially for lined pipes, for instance, uh, you lose information uh, about uh, the uh, carrier pipe, while for MFL, you often lose ex uh, uh, um, um, the precision or accuracy uh, for the ferritic steel. Uh, you can inspect parts of it. Um, but as I've said, you you don't uh, achieve everything at once like you would do for a standard pipe. Yeah, uh, and there is a need to improve on this. Okay, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, but okay. Mm. <laughs> okay, um, I am uh, still looking if there are more questions coming in. So pr probably uh, I uh, have a brief question here because you were also talking about. Uh, the cost side of the inspection. And uh, so what is if uh, the challenging inspection uh, is uh, maybe even more expensive than uh, building a new pipeline? Yeah, in some cases, operators might be surprised on how expensive it is to build new tools from scratch. And then if the challenge is such that it can be easily, easily overcome, but then we're back to modifying the pipe, of course, yeah. Uh, then indeed it could be such that uh, uh, you rather uh, build a, a pipeline in a different way, manner. But interesting about this is that we have had um, also projects where pipelines were built such that they were not really piggable, uh, at least not with existing tools, but they were, it was possible to build these pipelines so much cheaper that uh, the saved money was good enough to then uh, have a company develop a new tool for this particular pipeline, yeah. So in some, it, it depends very much. It could be such that, yeah, okay, maybe laying a few uh, hundred meters of a new pipeline might be cheaper than uh, uh, having an expensive um, uh, engineering operation. But in some cases, uh, it can save so much cost to have an what traditionally is unpickable pipeline and have a tool uh, that uh, uh, this still saves some money, yeah. That very much depends, of course, on the project. Yeah, okay. So uh, I've seen that there are a lot of more questions uh, coming in right now. Um, probably we still have some time to, to go through a, a few more. So one uh, in here is, uh, after complete fabrication of the pipeline, inspection of joints carried out by radio radiography, then we go to hydro test of pipelines. Hi, how hydro testing of pipelines is good considering strength of material? Yeah, okay. I mean, hydro testing is still uh, prescribed in most of the of the codes uh, for the commissioning of the pipeline, but it's also very much a standard to run what is called baseline surveys. Um, <clears throat> there, there was. There was a debate, something in the, I would say, 80s, 90s, uh, especially here in Germany, about what is was called stress tests, such that you would do a, a hydro test at very high levels of stresses to uh, condition the material a little bit. Um, but that is that was at that time um, a question of uh, hydro test versus ILI. But I think the the outcome of that discussion is clearly. Uh, ILI is the long-term uh, preferred option here. Uh, so uh, hydro tests are done in the very beginning of the commissioning uh, before you do any other testing. Of course, wells are tested. Sure, but uh, sure about that. Um, uh, but then you you already start before commissioning often with a, a baseline survey using ILI. I think that's the state of the art. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, so there. Are one more question. Uh, unpickable could also mean that the tool can be run, but cannot inspect the whole line. Do you agree on this? Yes, for various reasons that, that could be. I mean, of course, the what I call the uninspectable lines uh, to some degree is exactly that. It, it may go through, uh, uh, it, it uh, inspects only some components of, of, the, of the line. I, I understand this question may be such that it could not uh, do the full distance maybe, that's also possible. 
One thing that we have achieved now is ILI inspections over 1,000 kilometers, which like 30 years ago, nobody would have uh, considered to be possible, but uh, that is something we can do now. Uh, of course, there might be other areas where we where we lack a few things, and then we maybe complement this with some external inspections. Yeah, that's also a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm sorry that we are running out of time. There are so many more questions. We will definitely uh, forward them to you, Conrad, to to uh, um, follow up on this afterwards, uh, and that you can uh, reply to each single one then. Afterwards, again, uh, thanks a lot again, Conrad, for this interesting uh, keynote speech. And uh, we would now like to...